week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrun. As per usual, big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, uh, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, very much appreciated. Uh, also, um, it seemed to go down pretty well. The, uh, the, the the Cardrona Distillery seemed to be happy with what they said was a, you know, a, a balanced and honest review and can't ask for more than that because that's uh, what, what I try and do. Um, also something I forgot to sort of say in the last couple of episodes of the show that any comments that I make during the show are wholly my own and uh, uh, do not pertain to uh, uh, the, my uh, my employer. Um, so yeah, we're kind of carrying on the theme uh, of new stuff this week. Uh, as you can see, it's the, uh, the the tasting set that was released for the uh, Springbank Online Tasting Week. Uh, when was that? Twelfth of May. Uh, so a big thank you to my good friend Neil Wright for sending me. Uh, one of one of the packs. Uh, also, a big thank you to my good friend uh, Sashi Mahindra for a sample of the 12-year-old. Um, so I got quite a bit of that, which was quite nice. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you. A big thank you. You know, um, obviously, without without your support and generosity, then uh, that there would be no show, uh, which would be a bit of a shame. Because um, I like the sound of my voice. No, no, I didn't say that at all. Um, Anyway, yeah, so uh, Springbank, I don't really need to say an awful lot about it. I know this episode will get the views, which is kind of cool. Part of the reason why I do it, you know. But I, you know, it's an A-rated distillery as far as I'm concerned. I love, I, I love Springbank. I love what they do. I um, don't love everything that they do, obviously. But, you know, it's, um, it's always fun to taste their, their stuff. So, um, not really a great deal else to say apart from let's have a look at today's one. She's so skinny because she doesn't have so go and toast them in the, in the order that they're numbered, so it seems the most sensible option to me. Uh, we're going to kick off with uh, the Hazelburn uh, Online Tasting Week 15 year old. This was bottled at 54.9% and aged in fresh Oloroso. Yes. Yeah, okay, yep, can see that. Um, Bottling number two is the second Hazelburn uh, sample. This is the 21 year old bottle of 46%, uh, due for release uh, later this year, uh, probably towards the end of uh, end of the year. It's been matured in 70% bourbon and 70% uh, sherry, sorry, and 30% bourbon. So, um, yep, could be interesting. Bottling number three is the uh, last release of the 12 year old car strength. So this was 50% sherry, 50% bourbon, bottled at 55.4%. So um, yeah, I did uh, read some, some comments about lamenting the, uh, the lack of, uh, of sherry character in the 12 year old these days. Um, funny, I'm not complaining about that. Uh, anyway, we're not going to prejudge that like we're not going to prejudge the next sherry monster. Oh, oops, sorry, didn't mean to say that. Uh, so this is the online tasting week eight-year-old. But I mean, come on, look at the colour of that. It's as black as your hat. It is uh, almost impenetrable. Impenetrable? Impen impen uh, it sucks the light in, basically, doesn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is the online tasting week eight-year-old bottled at 50 6.4% spent six years of its life in refill bourbon, apparently, and uh, only two years in uh, fresh Pedro Zimenez. Well, really. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's uh, that's bottling uh, number four. Then we're going to move on to uh, bottling number five, which is the first of the two long row bottlings. This is the online tasting week 17 year old bottled at 50. 0.5% and uh, wholly aged in fresh rum casks. So, looking forward to that, could be interesting. And the last bottling of the afternoon is the uh, soon to be released uh, Long Row Red. So, this is the 14 year old. Um, soon to be released. No, it's not soon to be released. It's not going to be released until next year. I'm telling a walkie. Um, so, this is bottled at or will be bottled at 52.7%. Uh, it's 11 years in a combination of bourbon and sherry casks with three years finishing in uh, fresh Pinot Noir. So, yeah, should be a fun one to, to finish with. The, the long row red bottlings are always a bit of a bit of a laugh at the end of the day, aren't they? So, um, looking forward to that. But 
looking forward to all of them. So uh, I think it's uh, about time to shut up and um, taste some spring back. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the 15-year-old uh, uh, Hazelburn. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Sherry. Um, toasty sherry, treacle, dark raisinated fruit, coffee. There's a, a nip of alcohol. There's no spirit character. I don't get any Hazelburn. I mean, I know Hazelburn stands up to sherry pretty well for a triple distilled spirit. It's got some, some good weight to it. Um, it's certainly not what you would call an effete, um, should we say, a triple distilled spirit. But even so, there's there's no semblance of, uh, of of spirit character here whatsoever. It is all, it's all sherry. There's a little bit of maybe fish oils, a little bit of um, a bit of tannin, but you know, I'm getting no no character. I mean, obviously the sort of fishiness and what have you does kind of give the game away as to the origin of the spirit. But if you're tasting it blind, it's just it's just sherry really at the end of the day. And uh, you know I like my sherry. <laughs> well, yes, I like my sherry as long as it's uh, a sherry rather than, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's very clean. I mean, I'll give it that. There's no off notes. There's no sulfur. So, you know, you, you lot that love your sherry, um, Hazelburn and Springbank are just going to sort of like, you know, fall over yourself for this one. But there's just, to me, there's just no complexity, really. It's just, just sherry. Let's see what we'll pass on. Yep, pretty much the same. Yeah, raisinated fruit, coffee, uh, a little bit of treacle, some tannin, dark chocolate. Um, again, no no spirit counter whatsoever. There's there's some alcohol. Um, frankly, the hazel burn was was no chance against that. To be honest with you, I mean it's just. I mean it's got pleasant length. It's okay. You know, it's just. I, yeah, yeah. Not particularly exciting at the end of the day. It's not particularly balanced, um, and you know that, uh, um, that you, you pretty much knew straight from the word go that I was going to say something pretty much along those kind of lines. But uh, it, yeah, it's just just a, a tad on the disappointing side. But you know that's that's just me. Right. Okay. So. Uh, Let's move on to the 21 year old, so bottled at 46%. Let's see what that gives us on the end, shall we? Oh, no, that is lovely. That is, I mean, yeah, all right, so 70% sherry, get that, understand that, but it's got that lovely, mature, dusty, old sherry character, that almost kind of cognac esque dried fruits. Um, it's aromatic. There's a little nuttiness coming through from the American oak. Um, there's a little bit of sawdust as well. A touch of fish, violets, salt. A little bit of charred oak kind of coming through as well. And you get the feeling of mature barley as well, mature apricot. Um, I mean, that is just sublimely balanced. That is stunningly good. And, and it just, again, just goes to show you... Um, Okay, yep, 70% sherry, 30% American oak. I mean, you would have thought closer to 50-50 given the nose. The, the nose is just, just, you know, got that lovely maturity. And, and it's just stunningly balanced. I mean, that is lovely. Absolutely lovely. So, that's like. A little lighter, a little bit more delicate, opens up with the barley, the spirit character. The American oak kind of comes through, um, a little bit of dusty tannin. Moving into the sherry, sort of again I'm getting that slight cognac esque dried fruit, the mature sherry character, the spice. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's gorgeous. The sherry's a lot subtler on the palate and it just adds that kind of nuance. Um, 
to the to the overall spirit slightly oily on the finish again a little bit of fish oil a little bit of violet um, American oak kind of returns really in in the finish so it's got a lovely progression it kind of kicks off with the American oak uh, yeah it's almost like bookending I suppose you know and finishing with the American oak and the sherry just ge gently coming through on the mid palate that is how to bottle Hazelburn in my personal opinion I don't mean uh, in, in the sort of like the, the age of it I mean that has just got so much more going on for it at the end of the day um, absolutely gorgeous love that Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the two spring banks. So this is the 12-year-old car string, bottled at 55.4%. Okay, sherry notes up first. Um, coffee, earth, quite a bit of peat in actual fact. Um, a little bit of stewed fruit, vanilla, fish oils. Actually, that's pretty polished. I mean, that's really nicely balanced. Um, yeah, some sultana, some malt, bit of brine. I mean, that is just, again, balanced. Um, the sherry is not dominating. It's giving it that little bit of a grittiness, that little bit of coffee, a little bit of dark chocolate, a um, little bit of dried fruit. And it's, that's the complexity that I want from my spring bank, you know. Um, I don't want a one-dimensional spring bank, whether that's one-dimensional in the sherry sense or the American oak sense. Um, that's, that's, that's perfect, you know. Um, and no, I don't, I don't miss the sort of like the big sherry monster 12-year-olds of, of the past. Because um, this has just got so much more nuance and complexity. See what passes on. So it opens up with the American oak. I'm getting them. It's like dried vanilla. I'm um, dried vanilla. Dried apricot vanilla. Um, Sherry moving through, a little bit of sultana, a little bit of raisins, um, some grippy tannins. It's a little masked on the finish. There's, again, quite a bit of peat in actual fact that I'm picking up. Certainly the peat kind of comes through really on the mid palate and then lingers right through to the, the finish. There's, um, again, it's actually quite polished. It's, it's, it's there elegant in, in actual fact I would, I would go as far as saying I mean it's got that slightly sort of edge to it which is what you want from uh, from your spring bank but it has some real elegance to it um, and certainly the palette is a lot more bourbon orientated uh, and a lot less of the sherry the sherry again is just sitting in the background a little bit of dried fruit some tannin you know that that's pretty balanced now I'll put a drop of water with it because I have a little bit more of this than I had of the other um, uh, sample. So we'll see what a little drop of water does to it. Um, again, pushes back the sherry. Uh, I'm getting a lot more of the malt, the earth, fish oils, apricot, sweeter uh, vanillas, uh, vanillins, sorry. Um, it's yeah I mean like a lot of bottlings you put a little drop of water with it and the sherry does kind of slink off which again I'm not going to sort of complain about because that's again a lovely spirit let's see what the power sign now again a lot more spirit character a lot more Oily, fishy, briny, apricot, dried apricot. A little bitterness on the finish. The sherry has kind of slunked off, but the bitter tannins are just remaining, which, you know, I, I, I like. I like that little bit of an, an edge in the finish. Um, certainly, to me, one of the attractions of Springbank is this very naturalistic kind of character. Um, yes, it can be polished at times, but there's still a bit of a an edge to it, you know, um, not quite as edgy as, say, something like Ben Roth is, for example. Um, but, you know, it's, 
it, it's what I like about Springbank. There is a sort of like a a sort of controlled roughness about it, which is which uh, suits me quite quite perfectly, I think. And um, that bottling of the twelve year old was mm, spot on. Right, okay, let's move on to the eight-year-old. So, six years in Bourbon, two years in uh, Fresh PX. Let's see what the nose gives us. Oh, I think you know what I'm going to say. It's a sherry monster. Um, it's pure prune juice, grapey, dark fruits, um, treacle, tar. I mean, there's nothing else going on at all. It is totally and utterly PX. Um, it's quite herbal. There's a little bit of cardamom, um, toasty raisins, black grape. I mean, you know, there's no spirit character there whatsoever. There's nothing, nothing. No American oak at all. It is it's the stuff that you lot are all going to wet yourself over. It has to be said, or certainly you lot that love your, uh, your big sherry monsters. But, you know, to me, it's, again, it's just sort of like, it's just one dimensional. It's kind of, the reality is that this could have been any spirit from any distillery. It is so PX orientated that there's, there's no nuance. Um, I mean... <laughs> Maybe if it had spent two minutes in the um, in the PX cask, we might have had a little bit more balance, but certainly um, no semblance of balance here whatsoever. So the last one. And the palette is exactly the same. It's all PX. It's the raisinated fruits, dark grapes, um, winey, grapey, tarry, um, a little bit of cinnamon. There's some sweet cinnamon. There's a little bit of cardamom. Um, no spirit character. A little bit of toasty American oak. Just noticeable right on the aftertaste. It just goes sort of like, pew. Um, just to say, well, we did spend six years in American Oak and um, we are adding a little bit of character. Um, but there's no spirit character, there's nothing else. Um, it's quite spicy, it's juicy, it's clean, there's no sulphur. Um, like I said, it's, you know, those of you that, that love your big sherry spring banks are just going to wet yourselves and all the rest of us are going to go, well, fine. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the 17 year old long rows. So 50.5% and uh, fresh rum. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? It's a bit shy to start with. It's kind of, you kind of really got to dig um, and, and sniff quite hard to sort of like, you know, get this going. Um, okay, so the rum notes are fairly noticeable. Um, oily, rummy, dried fruits. Um, there's a little bit of funkiness, um, uh, which could be spirit funkiness, could be cask funkiness. Um, not getting a lot of peat, in actual fact, which is quite surprising, although, you know, 17, peat's going to be dropping off a little bit, but I would have expected more peat. Um, I mean, it's delicate, it's aromatic, there's a saltiness there, there's a sort of briny rock pools, I guess. Um, fish oils, a little bit of, a little bit of barley, possibly, it's, it's very delicate, it's, yeah, I guess you could say it's elegant. Um, it's certainly surprising, I, was, I mean, you know, I was expecting, you know, sort of full-on, sort of long row peatiness and funky uh, sherry notes, and not sherry notes, uh, rum notes. Um, God, it's good, there's all this sherry going around. Um, but it's pretty restrained, actually. It's, it, you've got to kind of work the nose. Um, and, you know, I'm... Yeah, I like it. Um, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, hmm... Pass 
oily, rummy, again quite delicate, um, slightly funky. Um, can't figure out whether whether the peat is kind of just dropped off naturally or whether it's a little submerged under the rum cask. It's not the sweet rum, rummy fruit that uh, you would uh, you would have thought. Well, mind you, but then again, I don't know where the cask come from. It's possibly. Uh, it's, it certainly doesn't have the funkiness of a Guyanan rum, but it's not a sort of like a, a big, a big sort of treacly, um, molassy kind of rum note. It's got a sort of quite, quite a nice, um, almost elegant dried fruit kind of character. Um, it's got actually quite a chalky kind of finish to it. It's quite sort of drying and and chalky and. And crumbly and and yes, there's some peat there, but again, it's all very delicate, very elegant, pleasant. It's not. It's just not what I was expecting whatsoever. You know, uh, I just rem remember some of the sort of like the long rows from the past. You know, you know the Barolos and finish and rum finishes and all that, and they they normally just whack you around the head with sort of peat and weirdness. And this is actually pretty restrained. It has to be said. It's like I said almost elegant in in a long row kind of way and um yeah I, I i like it i think it's not a bad bottling right and finally we're on to the long row red 14 year old let's see what the nose goes on this end shall we Again, we're actually quite restrained for long row, and certainly for long row red. I mean, again, I remember some of the earlier long row bottlings, you know, were just like, just an assault on the senses, you know, sort of so much kind of like red fruit and peat and what have you. Um, but again, restrained. Um, a little bit more peat notes, obvious. Uh, it's younger. There's some briny barley. Peat is, a, is quite stringent, actually. Um, and the, um, the the red fruits are quite subtle, quite balanced. Um, there's a little bit of a sort of a little bit of tannin, a little bit of um, tar. But again, I'm getting a lot of of, of spirit character. Uh, I mean, yes, you could say, well, it's only spent three years on XP no and wild cards, but then that. Springbank only spent bloody two years in, in, in XPX, you know, and it's kind of here we are with the sort of um, the fact that sort of finishing in, in wine casks, as we well know, is not an exact science. It's kind of like, you know, stick your finger in the air and see, see where we're at kind of stuff, you know. Um, and this is actually really balanced and, like I said, pretty restrained by long row standards. And is this where long row is kind of going? You know, have we have we seen the the end of the sort of you know, the behemoth peaty kind of whiny, intense grapey you know uh, charactered long row? Are we now in a time of of elegant long row possibly? Mm, who knows? Um, certainly, it seems that way. Let's uh, see what the powers are. Again, quite elegant and delicate, and opening up with um, apricots and sort of and, and, and sort of spirit character um, with sort of pinot kind of coming through on the mid palate. A little bit of dried red fruit, a little bit of spice. Um, again, pleasant level of peat, not a huge peat monster, or quite um, balanced in actual fact. Um, nice finish, chewy, tarry. Um, and I, I think I, I did see some sort of, you know, mentions about this. That it was, like I said, you know, not the long row red of old. And, you know, maybe a lot of a lot of you guys are just getting so used to sort of like, you know, um, the, 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 the long row reds being sort of like, you know, these huge monsters of, uh, of peat and, uh, and, and cask, you know, uh, that you're going, what? What's all this about? You know, mm, elegance, long row, mm, mm, you know. But to me, I like that. I think it was balanced. And um, yeah, okay, it's it's not what it was, maybe. Um, but, you know, things change, things progress. And uh, um, 
what I will say is it kind of starts off a little bit slowly and, and really only kind of picks up towards the finish. The finish has got a lovely intensity um, and, you know, I wouldn't say, well, yeah, it's sort of sort of goes to sleep a little bit on the mid palate it has to be said it's not the sort of you know although like i said that the, the wine sort of comes in on the mid palate it's a it's a bit sort of i wouldn't say lacking because that's not the right word but it it does go to sleep a little bit and then just sort of picks up on on the end and um no it's different it's interesting and and i think you know who wants you know every release of a certain type of whiskey to be exactly the same you know it, uh, and as we well know you know it's never going to happen you know you you do your best to sort of like blend cast together to sort of get a, a similar kind of product each time but you know we like a little bit of nuance we like a little bit of difference that's what makes a, a talking point at the end of the day um and certainly i think um i think this has been um been a whole lot of fun so yeah there you go that's uh, the long row red 14. right okay that's some today's episode of the show like i said big thank you to uh to neil for uh the samples and uh big thank you to, to uh, sashin as well um yeah uh, good fun i mean at the end of the day we're all going to have our own opinions uh and they're all going to differ uh some of us don't particularly oh, no right okay so let's sum today's episode of the show well um big thank you like i said at the beginning to to uh to neil for the uh the the, the set and to, to sashin for the uh, the 12 year old uh really appreciate that I, I i've enjoyed this i think it's been been a whole a whole load of fun i mean all right yeah okay i wasn't a huge fan of the uh of the hazelburn 15 well that's probably a bit of an understatement isn't it i mean you know it was it was all cherry and no trousers really at the end of the day it's just it, to me it's sort of like I, I taste whiskey like that a lot of the time and i think well what's the point um it, like i said it could come from anywhere there's no nuance uh, whereas the 21 now now you're talking you know and I'm not just saying that because it's old um, it, it was just, just infinitely better balanced at the end of the day I actually could taste some American oak I could taste some spirit character I could taste some sherry and and that's to me is more intriguing and more interesting than just sort of like a one-dimensional uh, spirit and the same could be said for the uh, the 12 year old uh, again you know really nicely balanced uh, and um that at the end of the day is 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 what i look for in any spirit not just uh, a whiskey or just spring bank or anything else i just look for a balance a balance between all the flavors associated with that particular spirit whether it's a, you know um cask spirit whatever that what i want is it i want it to sort of tell me uh, something about itself rather than just basically saying well you know it's all about the wood or whatever which is again the eight-year-old spring bank well that was what it was it was just all about the px it was heavy px it was just nothing else and again it just didn't really interest me in the slightest um the uh the long road run like i said uh interesting delicate elegant maybe took a little while to get going certainly not sort of um the long row from from days gone by shall we say um and is this the direction that long row is moving in the slightly more dare i say it, elegant style of spirit maybe well it's still i didn't think it was a bad bottling and uh, the same could be said for the um uh, the long row red 14 again not not the same as as long row reds from the past you know it's it, it's where it is now you know it's a, a little bit more more elegant and uh, a bit more possibly a bit more balanced at the end of the day which is you know uh, for me i think that's that's really good um some of you like i said probably would disagree with that because you prefer your long row to sort of like you're whacking around the head you know i i thought that was just a little bit more a bit more intriguing shall we say a little bit more nuanced uh and a less 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 of a less of a blunt object shall we say but anyway there you go um that's this week's episode of the show in the bag um i hope you've enjoyed it uh it's, it's certainly been uh, a load of fun so um 
until next week um good dreaming and um good afternoon <laughs>